I tried to find Bob Bryant, but it was as if he'd disappeared. Sometime later, I heard the Wild Bunch was back together. Kid Curry escaped from jail, and now he was running the whole shebang. So I took to their trail, as I was still in pursuit of my brother's killer and hoped that he was back with them. That Kid Curry's kind of crazy, ain't he? Don't let him hear you saying that. Anyways, I tracked those boys to a camp right outside Parachute, Colorado. Who's shooting at us? Where are the fire? Somebody really! Being outnumbered, I didn't bother with a warning shot. I just started taking those bastards down. Old Bob wasn't among them, and neither was Kid Curry. I could sense them close by, however, plotting something nasty. I just needed a clue as to their whereabouts. A map with their bold plan clearly marked. This time they were fixing to blow up a train trestle. Property of the Union Pacific. The plan clearly indicated how they were fixing to undermine several of the weakest wooden supports. Kid Curry was considered the wildest of the wild bunch. It was said that he fathered 85 bastard children, though some say it was only five. Kid Curry had bragged to a whore how he was gonna rob a train heading to the U.S. Mint in Denver. And that whore, Fat Sally, she told me. The bridge was rigged with dynamite, so I decided I'd best be careful confronting those bastards. and I made it a point to remove any dynamite that I came across. A moment later, I saw a ladder that somehow had escaped my attention. Don't you blow us up now. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing.
but the wild bunch did not take kindly to my presence and attempted to blow my head off. <laughs> It appeared the kid had found a number of new recruits to bolster their ranks. Guess there's always desperate men willing to trade their lives for stolen treasure. Now you're really pissing me off! What happened next? Well, having removed the first bundle of dynamite, I decided I might as well remove the other one. Once that was done, I figured I'd find my way from there. I was sweating it a bit, but then I noticed a footbridge tied up on high, so I shot the rope.
So that was all the dynamite? Well, funny you should mention that, darling. As actually, there was a fourth charge impeding my progress. Once I removed it, my path was pretty clear. proceeded onward to realize that that way just wasn't going to work. I needed an alternate path forward.
Luckily, I found a cave, and as I made my way back to the bridge, I saw something that concerned me. It was a long, burning fuse, and it was moving fast as hell. I had to catch it. so damn quick. I had to run like the wind. I almost had it, but no. Sparks. My heart was pounding like a sledgehammer. Get off the bridge! Get off the bridge! I knew that failure meant boom. Then, finally, at the last moment. Whew. Of course, I was successful, or clearly I wouldn't be talking to you folks here today. Naturally, I removed the last dynamite charge. Well, it was a touching reunion. But by this time, I was thoroughly exhausted and dragging my ass as I was not a young man anymore. Precisely, they found me.
just when I thought things couldn't get worse, Kid Curry opened up on me with a goddamn Gatling gun. It was hidden in this tunnel and pretty well shielded. Still, however, had my work cut out for me. Himself. He had decided to stop pussyfooting around and deal with me personally. as he was. I was just a bit faster. And as he lay wounded, I demanded to know the whereabouts of Roscoe Bob Bryant. He shouted at me. Is that what this is about? 
Bob went with Butch and Sundance to South America. You ain't never finding him. Those were his last words. So, uh, Bob Bryant got away? I knew I'd never find him in South America. What about the other killer? Yeah, you kind of glossed over that one. Well, I found Jim, not long after my showdown with Ringo. At the time, he was riding with the James Younger gang. Did I neglect to mention that? Jesse James? The greatest outlaw who ever lived? Jesse and his kin rolled with Quantrill when he raided Lawrence, Kansas and killed near 200 people, boy. Ah, nothing great about that. And from there, him and his brother went on to rob banks and trains from Kansas to Missouri. Which is why there was such a rich bounty on their heads. Forty grand for both of them, dead or alive. That's one hell of a payday. I confronted them as they were robbing a train. Bullets were flying at me from every which way. But I knew I'd have to fight my way forward if I was gonna find this gym. stop this train in the first place. Well, the James boys were experts at this. <laughs> they hopped a freight train, having heard there was a big payroll in the express safe. So, I hopped the same train. The James Younger gang was decimated after that little fiasco they had in Northfield, Minnesota. So Jesse needed more men and took on the killer I was after, along with a host of others. I was hoping to find my man and put a bullet in his head. Climbing around. 
on that train, I must have swallowed a hundred damn bugs before I the reached James that... James Younger gang pulled the first train robbery west of the Mississippi. Sounds like you hold them in high regard. Everyone knows they were the most famous outlaw gang ever. And you took them all on by your lonesome. Again. I'm finding this all a little hard to swallow, friend. Well, maybe you need to wash it down with some whiskey. By the way, did I mention that that train was flying down those tracks like a bat out of hell? Suddenly, I have an urgent need to drain my one-eyed snake. Well, I've had more than a few drinks, and uh, I've been sitting here for quite a spell. <laughs> right through there. Let me show you. I never heard so much malarkey in my life. Uh, you think he's bullshitting us? You don't think he's Silas Greaves? I think he's just some old drunk looking for some free liquor. I don't know, Jack. I think I believe him. You don't think he met Jesse James? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. That story makes no sense at all. Jack. I mean, you gotta be two bricks short of a load to believe that cock and bull story. I don't agree. Jack, lay off the oh, ball. You seriously think that tired old man went toe-to-toe -to -toe <laughs> with Jesse James? Well, that's better. Did I mention that this Jim was married to the infamous Bell Star? Of course, I didn't learn that until later. Anyway, I made my way forward the best I could. Around the sides, over the roof. Some son of a bitch saw me and shouted out, It's a damn Pinkerton! Oh, it's a damn Pinkerton! Now, I never worked for that line of oh. sucker, but I guess they assumed I was one of his assassins. Jesse's mother's house and killed his stepbrother. So it's no wonder each and every asshole on that train wanted to be dead. Everybody's always mistaking you for somebody else, aren't they? Why is that, I wonder? Go right ahead. 
to know, Jack. I'm just telling you how I remember. up with a creative way to make my way forward. I wondered if I was ever going to find the front of that train, or the bastard I was after. Jesse hired a damn army after Northfield. Guess he didn't want to be outgunned like that ever again. Right about then, I was attacked by some asshole on a Gatlin gun. Seems like you run into a lot of them. Asshole? Gatlin guns. Yes, I did. Now, I don't remember how I took it out. It was either a bullet or dynamite. Where would you find dynamite? Does it really matter, Jack? You're messing with the flow of the story here.
I was looking for Jim and shooting any son of a bitch stupid enough to get in my way. And that included Jesse James himself. There were a lot of men determined to die that day. It was then that Jesse detached the express car from the rest of the damn train. I could see Jesse waiting for me, fixing to kill me so he could get away with all that money. You had a showdown with Jesse James? Of course he didn't. Everybody knows that Jesse was killed by Bob Ford. Yeah. Jesse went out like John Wesley Harden. Coward shot him in the back of the head. Guess it doesn't matter how far you run, does it, Ben? Your past always catches up with you. <coughs> yeah, I didn't kill Jesse James. Just wounded him bad enough to convince him to hang up his guns. What about that Jim fella? What happened to him? I figure he was up front with a gun to the engineer's head. That bastard slipped away again. I'll tell you how I got him. But first, I need to whip my whistle. After my showdown with Jesse, I continued to track his brother, Frank, and that son of a bitch, Jim. I followed those bastards into the high mountains as they were going to ground. What mountains would that be? Somewhere in the Ozarks, I believe. The perfect place to hide out from the authorities. In fact, before I could find them, some Indians who fled the res and were hiding out from the military found me first. They probably thought I was a cavalry scout and didn't want me telling the military where they were. Engines? Yeah, they, they could have been in Cheyenne, but there was all sorts of renegades roaming the landscape back there.
How about another whiskey, Ben? Nothing better to soothe the troubled soul. Now, where was I? Indians, right. I had more than my share of run-ins with the Red Man. Mm. Like that time, did I tell you about Grey Wolf? Yes, sir. Yeah. Ah, of course I did. In fact, I can still remember that old medicine <gasps> man's words. Jesus Christ, we're back to that again. You carry great darkness in your heart. It will claim your soul. <clears throat> place again and kill many more men. Everything you are. Let me ask you something, Ben. You ever think about death? Mr. Graves, are you all right? Oh, dear. Oh, Won't you spare me over till another year? What is this that I can't see with ice cold hands taking hold of me? Well, I am death, none can excel. I'll open the door. To heaven or hell, oh dear, someone would pray, could you wait to call me another day, oh dear, oh dear, won't you spare me over till another year? So are you gonna answer the question? What question is that? Jim Reed. Did you ever find him? Reed was indeed that son of bitch's surname. That's right, Ben. A despicable character. I remember him laughing like a hyena that cold morning they lynched me and my brothers. He was intent on avoiding my vengeance, but nothing was gonna stop me. Nothing. I finally did track those outlaws down. They had long rifles with scopes and were well positioned to pick off any poor soul who came anywhere close.
guessing Frank James believed I was responsible for the demise of his brother Jesse. I couldn't really disagree with the man as I thought Jesse was dead then as well. He backed off as I closed in on him, but he was still intent on killing me. And when I closed in on him again, he backed off again, looking for a better angle on me. I can't fault Frank for wanting his revenge as I was there for the same damn reason myself. At this point, I'm guessing you think Silas Greaves is a worse murderer than Jim Reed ever was. No, sir. A man who spent half his life killing somebody's brothers, fathers, sons. I think you were just looking for justice, sir. Why you were hunting the James Gang? The James Gang. Right. I finally found Frank holed up in his mountain cabin, and he was determined to have me dead. It was a pitched battle that could have gone either way. Luckily, I had some dynamite in my possession. Dynamite? On your person? A few sticks, just in case. It's always good to be prepared. Right. I'm just laying out the facts as I remember them, Jack. tumbling right off that cliff. With Frank James still in it? Yes, sir. But Frank James is still alive, living in Missouri, showing folks around the family farm for 25 cents a tour. I didn't say he died in the fall, now did I? I'm done with this damnable outlaw life! Kill me, don't kill me, do what you will! At this point, I just don't give a shit! I explained to Frank that I had nothing against him personally and that I was looking for someone else. You want Reed? Have at him! I never did like that bastard! I am done here! We parted in peace as Frank pointed out the path to my prey before making his way back down the hill.
happened with Reed? Well, I finally found the last of the gang hiding in a nearby cave. First, I had to dispatch the lookouts. But I was determined not to let that murderer escape my revenge again. Rather than wander in willy-nilly, I decided it would be better to smoke that some bitch out. Hey, Reed! I shouted. No wonder you're so ornery. Can't be easy being married to Belle Star. While you're off providing for the family, she's spreading her legs for every Tom, Dick, and Cole Younger. Not an attractive woman exactly, but very friendly. At least she was to me. Son of a bitch! It was then that the last bunch of bandits jumped out of hiding. Why won't this asshole give up? Would someone please kill him? Yeah! Just me and Reed. I had waited a long time to face him down so I could repay him for what he did to my brothers. Pay him, I did. you boys, but I'm pretty beat. Well, it's too damn bad you never found that Bob character. It seems a shame he never had to pay. Well, funny thing about that, I did have one more chance at him. Mm -hmm. 
Six months ago, I heard that Butch and Sundance were back in the States and had gathered up some of their old gang. I tracked them down, hoping that Roscoe Bob Bryant had returned with them. So you're saying they didn't die down in Bolivia? That's what I'm saying. Forty years I had waited to get my hands on the last of my brother's killers. Not even an army of demons could have stopped me now. He had to be close to 70. For all you know, he could have been dead. That thought had indeed crossed my mind. As did others. instance. Did my thirst for vengeance turn me into something worse than the man I was after? By this point in my storied career, I had killed more men than Bob Bryant ever had. I was furious as hell at that bastard for making me who I am. A man with no family, no friends, no purpose except shooting Bob Bryant dead. After that killer forever. From the time I rode with Billy the Kid. But that chapter of my story you already know. Chapter of that fairy tale, you mean? Suddenly it was 1910. There I was, an old man roaming a ghost town dead almost two decades. I wasn't about to call it quits.
Even though the ghosts of my dead brothers were begging me to end what I started so long ago. Mr. Graves, are you all right? Would you like some water? The Wild Bunch knew I was there. They were after a treasure they had hidden before they fled, buried in the grave of a dead amigo. Some folks think the town is haunted, so they figured there wouldn't be many people poking around. I intended to fill that grave with Bob Bryant's corpse. But like I said, the bandits knew I was on to them. They lured me in and hit me with everything they had. Because when I woke up... Uh, from the dead? There was silence all around me. I could swear to God I saw Billy then. Billy who? Billy the kid. William Bonney. He was shooting at me from a rooftop. Right, you are titched in the head. Mr. Greaves, perhaps we should switch you to coffee? You see that old Indian again, too? No, but I did see Billy's killer, Patrick Floyd Garrett. He came at me guns a-blazing. I knew that old war horse had died two years before. I wondered if maybe I was dead, too, and confronting the ghosts of my past. Perhaps all my sins were coming back to haunt me and, and drag me down to perdition. I saw Henry Plummer throw dynamite at me. of the cemetery, I saw John Wesley Hart, just like I remember.
Robert Olliger appeared with his terrible double barrel <laughs> shotgun. army was stopping me. Uh, my father-in-law got hit with a fallen branch. He spent the rest of his life talking to dogs. <sighs> Newman Hayes Clanton. William Brocious, John Peters Ringo, they all wanted me dead. Newman Hayes Clanton, William Brocious, John Peters Ringo, they all wanted me dead. Leroy Parker, a.k.a. Butch Cassidy, 
coming at me from out of the fog. Thanks for taking care of that bastard. But the kid wasn't quite deceased. Not yet. Takes more than one little bullet to kill the likes of me, partner. Those two looked like they hadn't seen each other for quite a while. Clearly, they were no longer amigos. Shit. I was hoping I wouldn't have to kill you. You won't have to, Butch. I'm killing you first. I asked him about Bob Bryant. But they were too busy with their own heated conversation. Let me get this shit straight. You want my money and the love of my life? You frittered it all away, Butch. That is mine. And so is that damn money. I didn't want to shoot anybody until I had an answer to my question. But those boys didn't give me much of a choice. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid died there in that cemetery not six months ago. Cassidy and the Sundance Kid were killed by the Bolivian Army. Everybody knows that. That's the legend, but it ain't the truth. So, uh, you never found Bob? There is no Bob. This old some bitch ain't even Silas Greaves. Sir, is that true? Have you been pulling our legs this whole time? Well, not the whole time. Oh, man, I think you've worn out your welcome here. Maybe you're right, Jack. Maybe it's time to pay. You see, Ben, or should I say Bob, your past always catches up with you. I, I was a different man back then, crazy. 
been drinking. I, I've changed my ways. I swear to you, if I could turn back the clock, I... But you can't, Bob. Why'd you toy with me like that? Telling those tales, knowing all along. Why not just lay your cards on the table? Wanted to suss you out, Bob. See what kind of man you turned out to be. Maybe prod you into drawing on me. See, all those years on your trail turned me into a killer. Can't even remember who I was before you tried to murder me. You, on the other hand, walked that very same path in exactly the opposite direction. What do you mean by that? You think your life is worth sparing, Bob? I'm a... Boy, what's your name again? It's Eisenhower, sir. Dwight Eisenhower. What do you plan to do with your life, Dwight Eisenhower? Uh, tomorrow I'll be leaving for West Point, sir. So, you want to be a soldier? Well, then do it right, son. Don't tear down the world out of anger and spite like I did. You build it up. You do something decent with your life, you hear me? Sir? Yes, sir. I won't have it said I left you with nothing, Bob. Won't you spare me over till another
There are men who fear legends, but a man legends fear. He's a four-holstered reaper, crying bullets for tears. When a drought comes in justice, bullets make good rain. When the heartache has dried up, only blood heals the pain. There's a time for grieving, and a time to just pray. There's a time for forgiving, but it's not for today. You can hide sins from the gavel, you can drown them in rum. When silence grease finds you, there's nowhere to run. And time goes too slowly for the gunslinger's eye. Till he's buried his promise, there's no time to cry. There's a time for grieving, and a time to just pray. There's a time for forgiving, but it's not for today. There's a time for grieving, and a time to just pray. When silence grief finds you, it's a time you must pay. That's a time you must pay. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Won't you spare me over to another year?